Hey everybody, it's Old School Nerd. Welcome in. Today, my two-part reaction to the Dark Side of the Moon featuring Fabian from LUVT. This one's called New Horizons. Now, this is a brand new song, brand new video. It's one of their favorites. It is an original track. This isn't one of their covers. Now, today is May the 11th. Special day for the Dark Side of the Moon. Very special day. Number one, this song, this video. Number two, tonight their first ever live performance as a band opening for the mighty forest fonts which means that at least two of the members of this band are going to have a very very long night i'm talking about jenny and of course hans plots speaking of hans plots at the end of this reaction join me as i have a quick little chat with the man in the hat the wicked you know the little wicked sorcerer of forest fonts and the dark side of the moon hans plots Hope you enjoy that. In the meantime, let's press play. Are you ready? You're not, but I'm gonna do it anyway. All right, we're back. I know, I made you wait. I'm sorry. Pressing play now. Live premiere, right now. <laughs> I hate that logo. Seen the shadows of a paradise, and I've seen my dreams perish when I realized all my tears an ocean where I've drowned. All my dreams. Like, no joke. <laughs> the intro and that drop in and that build up and that explosion literally choked me up. That is emotionally moving. That's crazy cool. Um, number one, Jenny, nice freaking harp. Okay. She uh, apparently her harps upgrade. <laughs> she goes, this is super epic goddess harp she's working on. Um, I don't remember if I've heard Fabian and Melissa sing together on a song. I don't think I have, but those two voices, two things, either A, we always put them together because it's beautiful, or B, they should never sing again because it could put a time temporal rift in the fabric of the universe and rip it all apart because I don't think you could put those two voices together too often because you can rip someone. Like I teared up just listening to the intro. Everything about this is magical, including Hans's hat. By the way, um, I was told by, by, by someone, I was told by someone to listen for a violin in this song. You may not see it on the video, but there's a certain amazing uh, violist or violinist from Italy who is on this song in the music. If you're a fan of the dark side of the moon, you know who I'm talking about. And um, I also found out who the bass player of the band is. Do you know who the bass player of the band is? I do. Do you want to know who it is? Hans and I talk about it after this. You know what? I'm going to stop talking. I talk a lot. A lot. I'm going to shut up now. I'm, I had to talk a little bit. Talking and rambling is my way of coping with the fact that I cry a lot. And this, the intro to this song made me cry a little bit. So, sorry. It's not a sad song. It's not a sad song. I'm tearing up because it's 
it's uplifting. You know, as you get older and you have kids and, and you see them grow up and they do great things and you get all sobby and stuff, it's like that. It's like when you watch a movie and horrible things happen and you cry because it's an emotional response to something horrible happening, right? Or in a part of a movie where something really great happens to someone who deserves it and you cry anyway. That's why I'm crying. That, and let's be honest, I'm weak. I'm a weak person. Very weak. Anyway. something that um I, I just i'm assuming i don't know what comes at the end of this okay so this is this is being done during the live premiere as i cut back you can see here's here's the chat room um i'm crying so there you go <laughs> okay so let's get back let's get back over to where it was i um wait wait see this is what happens when you do it during the live premiere you have to deal with the uh the countdown Okay, so here's something that I both love and that I, I worry about every time I watch uh, the Dark Side of the Moon videos. If Jenny's on a harp and she bookends the song, if you know what bookending is, it means we start with a violin like it's opening a storybook, right? At the end of the song, you end with, a, with not a violin, a harp, okay? Jenny's playing a harp. Duh, I keep getting her confused with someone else. It's amazing from Italy. So... If you book in the song with the harp at the beginning, like it's a storybook, and then at the end of the song, you close the storybook with the harp, it adds an emotional response. Now, why am I crying? I'm not sad. I'm inspired. Okay? Now, when in, an, in, an, in a few minutes, I'm going to... I know at the end of this video, y'all are expecting me to do this. Thanks for watching. But I'm not. No, because we have the interview with Hans Plotz. If you have questions like, what's his favorite song? What are they doing these next few weeks? 
what kind of a day they're having today, because it's a pretty big day, about the album tomorrow that comes out. Who is the bass player of this band? Who's the bass player during the live concert shows? Oh, spoiler alert, okay? Um, you're gonna find all that out now, because we're gonna talk about that here in a few seconds. But before we go to the Hans Plotz interview uh, that we filmed yesterday, I want to tell you guys something. This is a song I cannot play in my car. You cannot cry and drive safely. It's about the same thing as drinking and driving, which we do not do. This song for me is a cry because you're happy song. It's a cry because you're uplifted song. There are songs that give you different um, emotional responses. When I hear Bloodywood, I wanna jump up and down. When I hear Ginger, I wanna groove. When I hear Suicide Silence, I wanna punch my dog. I don't punch my dog. If anybody, he punches me when I get too close to Chelsea. He's like, what are you doing? Sorry, bro. Um, but that's what I'm saying. Like there, certain types of music give you a certain level of aggression or sadness or hype, or in this case, a feeling of upliftment and inspiration. Me saying upliftment and inspiration, I can barely say it right now because I'm starting to choke up again because the song is that good. I have only heard this right now with all of you. And I was trying to film a reaction, so I wasn't even paying attention too much to the lyrics. I was too busy trying to stay on camera and enjoy the music, right? Which means the next time I hear this song, it's gonna be better slash worse for me because I'll actually be paying attention because I won't be trying to do a reaction live for the first time. Wow. Okay, so Fabian, amazing. You and Melissa, force of nature. Hans, beautiful, beautiful guitar work. Of course, we, we know that there's a special Italian uh, violin player there. Of course, Jenny's there. Look, everybody's here. The Dark Side of the Moon is a culmination of passion. It is a work of art. It is a storybook. It's a project of love for all these musicians. I remember when they first announced this project, I was very interested. And now I don't know what my world would be without them. And a lot of you feel the same way. And with that, are you ready? Here's my quick conversation. I think we only talked for about 20 minutes because he had another interview that he was late for with a certain uh, um, reactor. Um, what's her name? I forget her name. I, I don't know. Fuck. <laughs> Sorry, Tori. I forgot your name. All right. Here's my interview with Hans Plotz. Hey everybody, it's Old School Nerd, and once again, I'm joined by the amazing Hans Plotz. Apparently, it looks like you're, are you in your magical guitar den this morning? Or this I'm afternoon? I'm in my magical guitar room. Yeah. That'll work. Okay, did you <laughs> know that you are the second busiest person I have ever met in my life? <laughs> the second, just the second busiest, so I have to try harder, I guess. What's the busiest person? Tommy, Johan right. Tommy Johansson from Sabaton. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay, all right. He had, well, no, the reason why I say you guys, you two are the two busiest people I've ever met is because how many projects that both of you have is overwhelming to me, the amount of commitment and effort that both of you put forward. And, and I, I make jokes with him all the time because I message him on Instagram. And I was like, dude, what are you doing today? He goes... I'm doing too much. And so, yeah. And so, yeah. And I know you're doing too much because the reason why we're having this conversation is you have more stuff coming. Um, who let's talk about the, um, the TikTok Jesus in the room. Um, <laughs> for assurance. Wow. What a video yesterday. Um, what an experience that was. I had so much fun reacting to that. Now uh -huh. you guys are on tour right now, right? Right. I'm okay. hitting the nightliner later today, the bus, the, the two bus. Oh, okay. So, I'm... and yeah, and, and tomorrow we will be playing Bremen, and we this also will be the first shows with Dark Side of the Moon. So, we are supporting us, ourselves basically with Dark Side of the Moon. Of <laughs> the moon we are supporting Feuerschwanz. So, that, we'll that's my favorite thing. It's like, double duty. Jenny, go change and get your harp. Um, someone go find Melissa. Uh, <laughs> Hans, uh, you're going to do the same stuff. Um, that's pretty much, it's, it's hilarious to me that, that y'all are doing that. But at the same time, that's pretty awesome. Um, yeah. for your schwanz yesterday, berserker mode, I went to the premiere and there was a guy named Adam in the premiere. And I don't know if you've heard this story yet, 
This guy named Adam, he's from the Netherlands. He's a super 40 shots fan. Well, I thought he was until in the chat, right before the premiere started, before you and all the other guys showed up, he goes, hey, when are they going to tour in Europe? And I went, <laughs> dude, they're touring right now for like the last month and a half. He's like, really? I'm like, you need to go check the social media. And I felt so bad for Adam because he he loved you guys and I felt so bad for him. But at the same time, all the Forest Shrines fans come to the premieres. If anyone's seen this interview, when Napalm Records does a premiere for Dark Side of the Moon or Forest Shrines, you got to go to the premieres because you get to hang out with amazing people and more than likely Hans will be there and other members of Forest Shrines and everyone has a good time. But this poor guy, Adam, who come to find out the show closest to him is sold out, by the way, coming up. Uh, everyone's saying, oh, I saw them here. I saw them here. And every time somebody would say where he saw y'all this tour, he's like, uh, so he feels how I feel because I can't get over there either. Okay. Uh, so it happens all the time. You post something, Hey, Hamburg, you have been so great. And the day after someone will ask, Hey, when, when are you going to play in Hamburg? <laughs> <laughs> I, it's it's I, always just like that. Oh, uh, I, I guess, I guess having that many fans getting that confused is actually a good thing. I mean, it could be worse. I mean, nobody could show up to premieres or shows. That would be that. Mm -hmm. But you don't have that problem. Uh, amazing photographs on social media you guys are posting. Those crowds look amazing. Everyone yeah. looks like they're having such a great time. Um, I did see a, I, a live video of a live performance of one of your stops where y'all did Berserker Mode. And Ben and Hoptman are, of course, up front. And they're doing their flex here. You know, but come yeah. on, they're screaming and everything. And, you know, of course, Joanna's right behind them with her violin and she's got that beautiful smile and she's doing her dance. And there you are in the back. You're just in the back with your guitar and your hat and you're just like, I just want Actually, to play. I'm having fun with, with, with Jenny back there. Because <laughs> she's standing next to me and she's always flexing and always when she's always you know, with her, head, with her head left and right. Yeah. Every time she looks light, left, I make another face at her. But it's quite fun. <laughs> it looks like it's an amazing show. And it, yeah. there's still a few dates I'll have left. There's still a few tickets to those. If you've seen this interview, you got to go. It's just insane. Now, uh, Berserker Mode was the second single from the new project y'all are working on right now? Yes. I thought the last album was crazy and fun and over the top. And apparently when y'all have that many creative people in one band with so many ideas, apparently it's, it's just going to get even more crazy. And I cannot wait for more of that. Um, <laughs> be safe on the road. Hope you have a great rest of your tour. And I guess uh, from there it goes that this starting, starting, is it tonight that, that Dark Side of the Moon or is it tomorrow that starts up? Is it to, it's tomorrow. We, we're hitting, we're driving the whole night basically and arrive in Bremen tomorrow. And tomorrow will be, will be the first show with the Dark Side of the Moon, which is quite exciting actually. Yeah, because yeah, you get to hang out with even more of your favorite people. Yeah, absolutely. You, and you, you know, it has been such a long time since Jenny of Old Stones and finally we're, we're going on stage. We're bringing it to life to for, in front of people this this is quite exciting yeah. uh, so you're you're playing tomorrow but also a new video comes out tomorrow the day before the <clears> album <throat> exactly so, so tell me about the new video the new song and uh and tell me who's the in new it. song is an original another original it's the second original after the gates of time um and we we have a wonderful guest we have fabian fabian ernie from Eluveti, and she matches so good with Melissa, and, and it's just I, I think it's such a goosebumpy, bumpish song. I don't know if it's a word. It <laughs> but, is. Uh, it, no, it one hundred percent is because when I did the reaction, now she joined y'all on uh, for she was with uh, Forish Fonts for the uh, Bastard of Asgard, right? Yes, yes. Okay, so I've already heard what she brings to the table. And every time she sings, it gives me goosebumps. So yeah. so it is very goosebumpy. But now she's with Dark Side of the Moon on this one. This one's called New Horizons. Yes. Okay. So New Horizons. And it's going to- And gonna... also hear um, a little bit more of Lusanda playing violin, actually. There's a violin in there, and that's Lusanda playing the violin. I was wondering when you're going to bring her back for some stuff. And here we go. It's mm -hmm. in the music, and I'm now happy. Uh, um, 
I think one of my favorite things about um, both projects, both Forest Fonts and Dark Side of the Moon, is I have actually discovered three or four new artists that I now follow and love their music just from the collaborations y'all are doing. So oh, it's cool. it's spreading the love. Um, so it's the new song premieres tomorrow on YouTube, yes. on, Na on Napalm Records site. Yes, 2 p.m. Central European Summertime, yes. which is 7 a.m. <laughs> my time. I'm going to be there. Um, I'm going to be doing my reaction to that tomorrow, of course. And of course, this interview will be, if you're watching this interview right now, my reaction to this video comes right after this. So awesome. um, it does. It really does. I'm so excited. <laughs> okay. So new video tomorrow, new start of your live performances opening for yourself. <laughs> Who gets to say that? Um, and then Friday, finally, the new album. Yeah, that's crazy. So finally. Metamorphosis, what what a labor of love. I remember it was, I think it was be the beginning of last year or the end of the year before last when y'all made the announcement that y'all were coming together, that this mm -hmm. was a project. And I remember my reaction to that announcement was, wait, all of these, all of these creative people are coming together and y'all talked about creating, uh, recreating uh, in the form of metal music so many amazing uh, art and uh, forms of creativity that have already come before. So we've seen the covers and the covers weren't necessarily of metal songs. They were of all kinds of, of media. And I, this has progressed to something that has become, did you think that this would become as big as it has? I don't know if it's big already. I don't know. It's just, we do just what we want to do and do songs and have fun doing songs and, if people like it, even better. But it's just uh, um, <clears throat> just getting on stage and re finally re releasing the album is such a milestone, you know, because you work like one and a half year or two years towards that point, and suddenly it's there. It's just that's crazy. It's, it's hard, hard, very hard to describe that you're finally getting the baby out to the people and getting all the reactions. And yeah, the reactions so far have been quite good. <laughs> and. Uh I've loved every moment of it. Um, are you nervous about playing tomorrow night? Yes, I am. That that's I, I asked the question because I knew you would say yes because you're a humble kind of person. But at the same time, everyone, including myself, thinks that's the most ridiculous thing ever. Hans can't be <laughs> nervous. Hans plays in front of thousands of people, wish force fonts every night, and there's fire and there's the Mew Mews with their fire, and Hoptman is jumping around in armor, and Ben's flexing for the ladies in the crowd, and and you know he can't be nervous but i guess because this one really is your baby to put it out there in front of people that realistically there are going to be people coming to the forest show that may not have heard any of the dark side of the moon so i guess yes, you absolutely. there is a little bit of a nervousness there but if they're there for forest shots yeah and that just... means that they they already know who melissa bonnie is they love her and all the other pieces of the puzzle you guys have put together I mean, I understand you're nervous, but nah, you'll be fine. Yeah, but, I, I, yeah. <laughs> but you never know what happens if it's if you go on the stage for the first time with a new band. You know, it's it's very exciting because you feel that you're alive actually by being nervous and having that adrenaline. You know, it's quite a it's quite a kick in in a way, but it's also yeah yeah exciting. We will be. I think we'll make it. We will make it, but um, real quick, I'll speak tomorrow after the show. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Send me a message on Instagram mm. and say it was better than I ever hoped. <laughs> oh, I gotta go. I have to play again. Um, yeah, because <laughs> you do doing double duty. A question. Speaking of getting things done. Yeah, there's something that you guys technically don't have in the dark side of the moon that people said you gotta ask him, and I was like, I don't know if I want to ask him this, but I will. You don't have a bass player in your band, so is that going to be handled by a musician, or is that do it with a backing track? No, we have. Um, <clears throat> first of all, the bass on the album was played by a fantastic bass player from Italy, um, Fabio Trentini. He's a fantastic guy and dude and friend. And what a name! He's got a fantastic name. Are you kidding me? <clears throat> hey, he lives in the Dolomites in the in the mountains, and <clears throat> he used to. Sorry. He used to produce Guano Apes, and it's just an 
really incredible musician. And um, on stage, we'll we'll have Corby from Ad Infinitum play the bass. So you're in good company then. Yeah, you you, you need a live bass. You don't. You yeah, don't. I, I just you don't do a bass from a backing track. I was. Because, yeah. oh, you can do it, but but it's 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 different because the, the drums and the bass they need to play together. Yeah, they need to communicate. Yeah, and that's what the live experience is about. Otherwise, you can just put in the CD and, well, watch a video or whatever. But 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 especially a bass player and a good place bass player and a good drummer playing together creates a unique energy, which you can't recreate by just entering a backing track or playing a backing track. There's a couple but, of napalm bands that come to mind, like yeah, Ginger. Like you take Eugene and Vlad from Ginger. Those mm -hmm. two together, that is, that's a storm. I mean, it's yeah. live. There's something, they get into that groove and you're just like, this is, doesn't yeah, even sound absolutely. like the album and it's even better. So yeah, I understand the whole need of having to have that bass with the drummer. Like as a, as a hand percussionist and I played kit before as a drummer, I love to watch the bass player's shoulders and how he moved the neck and watch his feet. Yeah. Kind of told me where we were going, if we were going someplace else. So you got to have that feel even if everything is completely set out, you kind of have that feel. I'm glad y'all, and look, Kobe's amazing. He's, yeah. you know, he's an outstanding guitarist. Obviously he knows Melissa very well. So I think, I think it's player. all a family good. affair at this point. It's just family at this point. Yeah. You can't replace a, a good bass player. I once, I want, once I jammed with Divinity Rocks. She's a female bass player and she played with um, Beyonce. She was in the old female, female band of Beyonce, like 2010 or something. And she's crazy. And just watching her playing is like all the energy is something you can't have on an album. That, that's the, the the whole th idea of playing live and seeing the person and how all the energy that can't be done just with a backing track. Yeah. I mean, you, you've got, you're going to have Melissa moving, obviously. She is always moving. Uh, yeah. You're going to have big drums. You're going to have yourself, top hat and long coat and the whole nine yards. There's something about the bass player sitting in the groove, just sitting back and the way they move kind of gives that, uh, it's kind of a comforting feel to an audience, even though it's very, very loud. It's just another dynamic that brings people into the story, which is, which I love. So I'm glad I asked because people had asked me, do they have a bass player? I was like, well, when, when the album comes out, we'll be able to look at the album and go, who's the bass player on this album? Oh, there it is. But we, we really didn't know if it was going to be for the live shows or how it was going to work out. Now we know. Um, so uh, what are you most looking forward to as far as playing these songs live? And what is, and someone, this, these are questions that people want to know about from you. What is your favorite song on the new Dark Side of the Moon album, the debut album? Uh, the, well, that's difficult. It's very difficult. Uh, that's why I asked yeah, it. I, I like them all. <laughs> I, I actually like them all. I think the originals, a little bit closer to to myself on the covers because so i there. like yeah. yeah i like new horizons very much which will be released tomorrow because um it, it seems to be a more simple song but those simple songs aren't are often the hardest to play to fill with life you know and i like the guides of time and regarding covers yeah when we talked about the double trouble yeah, the, the recreation of the the Harry Potter song. I remember you telling me that it's very very much so. That was that it's a very simple song, but it was very hard to play because it's very hard to create into something that it that it wasn't from create recreate it into something new. You said was that was a lot of work. It was wasn't easy to play. So I get that. Um, but I, I figured you were going to say at least the the two originals because those really come directly from the basis. From, the, from your heart. I mean, it's create, uh, creative. Yeah. It's three originals, actually. Wow. <laughs> that's, that's, that's crazy. That is so and, amazing. Yeah. And I also like If I Had a Heart, like the Viking song, because that was a song <laughs> I didn't know beforehand if this is going to work, you know, but it turned out quite well. And you have Rosanda playing on that song as well, actually. She's playing, <laughs> she's playing Nickel Harper. Nickel Harper is a, is a medieval instrument from that's the one with Sweden. it's it's like a hurdy-gurdy but it doesn't have the it doesn't have the crank it you play it like a like a, a violin with exactly. all the i've yeah. seen that 
And the yeah. reason, and I learned the name of it because Tank the Tech taught me the name of it. Oh, cool. See? <laughs> See, we all, it's, it seems like it's just this big elongated family of people that share ideas and we're all learning from each other and it's great. So excited. Yeah. Um, I do want to show you one thing. I know you saw it on your birthday. This is the last thing. I'm not going to bother you with anything else. I know you got to go. But remember when I told you that I had to have a, a hat for our next interview and you said I had to get a hat. Yeah. And, I, and I, to, I, I told my daughters <laughs> that um, I, needed, I needed a really cool hat like Hans yeah. Plotz. And my daughter said, I'll get you a hat, dad. So I took her to the costume shop and she got me this. Awesome. Now, this is not a cool hat. And I, I said, Caroline, this I need this to, for Hans. And she goes, yeah, I know. This is your hat. And I went, but Hans has a cool hat. He goes, she's like, yeah, but he's cool, Dad. You're not. So <laughs> this, 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 you saw this on your birthday. I know you saw it I when saw I did it. birthday. Yeah. So this is my Hans Plotz hat. Um, All right. I, I didn't want to put it. I didn't want to put it on this early in the morning because it might distract you from things you got to do tonight. So. <laughs> um, yeah, I was like, wow. So yeah, this, this is my daughter's idea of how cool you are compared to me. Okay. So <laughs> there you, you go. Yeah. Say hello to your daughter, by yeah. the way. <laughs> and she absolutely loved, I mean, absolutely loved that last Dark Side of the Moon track. I mean, she, when y'all did, it was, she just fell in love with Legends Never Die. It's her favorite song. Awesome. And, um, and then, um, she sent a message, uh, Melissa messaged me and told me to show it to her and say, glad you love the song and she's a dancer and when she sees that she's like i want to dance to this song and so that's what she's doing all the time i catch her i hear i hear that one track being re repeated in my daughter's room a lot and i'm like she's dancing again so oh nice see so all the ages love your music hans i appreciate it all right thank you <laughs> that, that that's gonna be it for us um i know you have another interview coming right up and um and i i, I know that she's excited to talk to you she's a friend of mine and um i wish you traveling safety Thank you. I, I wish you creative bliss, um, great health, because I know it's hard being on the road. And um, and good luck tomorrow night. I think I think you're going to be posting on social media that it was the one of the most amazing nights you've ever had. I hope so. And then Thank the you. next morning you can show us your blisters. I didn't know I had to yeah. play that long. <laughs> That's a long time to play, but, you know. Yeah, and then I have to go another, another three nights after the first night. But, uh, yeah. You're not complaining. I'm not, I won't complain. All right. <laughs> All right, everybody. This is the amazing Hans Plotz. My name is Old School Nerd. This is our second conversation. Don't forget, everyone, check out Feuerschwanz, all the stuff going on. They have all their social media. It's funny to see. It's hilarious. The new video is out, Berserker Mode. Please check that out. They're on tour right now. They have a few dates left. If you're available to get tickets in Europe, please do so. You, won't, you will not regret this. Also, if you do get tickets for the upcoming shows... Opening act will be The Dark Side of the Moon. They have a new song coming out tomorrow, new video, and new album Metamorphosis on Friday. Well, I got all that out without messing up. I'm proud of myself. Awesome. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you, Hans. Have a great day. I love, I love watching your reactions. And I saw yesterday's <laughs> I knew. <laughs> I didn't have a problem with any of the TikTok Jesus stuff. But yeah. I knew that if I could do it just the right way... I could get everyone to freak out in the comments about it, and I, I succeeded. It was it was so much fun. It was so great. All right, I think thank you so much, sir. Have a wonderful day. You too. Thanks for watching, everybody. If you enjoyed this video, give us a like. It really helps the channel grow. Also, if you want to subscribe, right there. Big thank you to all my Patreons out there. We appreciate everything you do. If you want more content like this video, check them out above. Remember, love one another. Take care of each other. We're all stuck on this mud ball together. We'll see you later.